Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. In this video, we're going to look at some examples to explore some of the geometric ideas of points, lines, and planes. And we're going to do that through an example that, uh, that I have in for you right here. So let's take a look at this and make sure we understand the problem first, and I'm going to add a few comments as we go. So the following figure is a rectangular box in which EFGH and ABCD are rectangles. What do we mean by EFGH? What this is referring to right here is the geometric structure whose vertices are E, F, G, and H. Let's find those. E, F, G, H. So E, F, G, H is referring to this rectangle that essentially forms the bottom of this box. A, B, C, D, finding those points, A, B, C, D, we're talking about the geometric rectangle that forms the top of that box. So we're saying that those are rectangles. Furthermore, we're mentioning two line segments, BF and DH. Let's see where those are. BF is the line segment right here. DH is the line segment right here. And we are saying that those are perpendicular to two other planes, F, G, H, and B, C, D. Or are those two different other points? Let's see. You might remember that if you want to describe a plane, you actually only have to indicate three points. Three points define a plane. So if I locate the points F, G, and H, I realize that they're in that plane that I colored in blue, the E, F, G, H rectangle. And B, C, D, by the same token, B, C, D, reference, references the top rectangle. So those two planes and the two uh, lines that I've put in gold are perpendicular to those two planes on the top and the bottom. Very, very frequent to describe a plane by three points. Any three points define a plane. So with all that understood, Let's take a closer look at this specific question that we want to look at. Clear all that out. Name two pairs of parallel lines. Now, when we talk about parallel lines, we usually say something casual like two lines that never uh, touch, that never meet, have no point of intersection. And that's close to correct, but not 100%. Par to be parallel lines, you have to have two lines in the same plane that never touch. So parallel lines are two lines in the same plane that never touch. Let's see if we can find a pair of those somewhere, and maybe one or two. Now, all of these edges of this rectangular box are line segments, but those line segments can be extended into lines. For example, if I look at the line segment CD and imagine that line extended infinitely far in any direction, it's easy to find a pair of lines or, or another line that would be parallel to that in the same plane. So let's think about where what planes that blue line would lie in. It lies in CDHG, the side, the right side, it also lies on the top. So Pick another line segment in that same plane where the lines never touch, and you can get a parallel line. That would be a parallel line. So one set of parallel lines could be CD, and I want to represent that as a line, so I'm going to use the double arrow, and GH. And again, I'll use the double arrow on that. That's one pair. But we can actually find a whole lot. Uh, here's another one that's kind of nice. If I extend this and look at the line BD, that line is in several planes. One of them is this plane that kind of crosses at an angle through the center of the box. And a line that it never touches in that same plane would be that one. So this is another example, BD, that line segment together with FH. And we name line segments and lines by just two points. 
So that's an example of points and lines that we can, and planes that we can look at. Let's do some others. So notice I've got the exact same setup, but in this case, I want to look at what I'm calling skew lines. Skew lines are also lines that never touch each other, but skew lines cannot be in the same plane. So there are plenty of examples here of line segments that if extended become lines that don't touch each other, but they don't lie in the same plane. Here's one. Let's take this line, extend this line segment out that goes across the top of the box. And let's also take this one that goes across the bottom of the box. The t this, this line is across the top of the box. This line is across the bottom of the box. So they are not going to touch each other. However, they're not in the same plane, so we would call them skew lines. So I'm trying to clean this up just a little bit here. Don't want to. So we would look at, for example, EF and BG as examples of a, as an example of a pair of skew lines. Let's see if we can find another one. Let's clean that up just a little bit. That's what I wanted to do before. Again, we just need two lines not in the same plane that never touch. And maybe we could use, I don't know, maybe this one. CG. And maybe this one. This one would never touch going across the bottom. Those, that would be another pair of skew lines, CG and FH. So that's another good example. Let's look at some other examples that relate to the same picture where they ask us for some different things. In this question, we're looking at a line, and this is a little bit hard to see, but this has a double arrow over it, so it is a line, the line AE. Where does the line AE intersect the plane FGH? Well, let's identify both of those and see what we're talking about. Uh, the line AE would go through the points A and E, so here they are, and I'm gonna extend that out into a full line, extend the line segment into a line. That's the line segment AE, line AE, and the plane FGH. So again, three points define a plane, Let's locate those points. And basically that's talking about the bottom of the box. And although this would clutter up the picture a little bit, so I don't want to do it. What we really want to realize is that plane is not just the bottom of the box, but extends infinitely far out in all directions. Where does that plane, the red plane, intersect with the blue line? Well, I think you can see these are going to intersect in a single point. So that line and that plane intersect in a single point. Let's try another one. Here we're talking about an intersection of two planes. Where do these two planes intersect? Well, again, let's, let's color them so we can get a better view about them. Uh, F, G, H, let's do that in blue. We identify where F, G, and H are. And actually, we saw this on the previous example. It's the plane that includes the bottom of this box. So I'll just color, color that in so I understand what it looks like. And B, D, H, let's look at that. I'll do that in red. B, D, H, I'm looking for the plane that would include those three. So that's gonna be this plane that cuts across the middle of the box. It's a vertical plane. So where does that vertical plane intersect that plane that uh, forms the bottom of the box? Well, it looks to me like it's, if we look just at what's inside the blocks, box, it would be this line segment right here. But again, it extends infinitely far in both directions. We're talking about the line FH. Hope that looks good. Couple more. Find the intersection of the plane ADE and the line BC. And again, that's a line that arrow goes infinitely far in both directions. Again, let's identify the two. 
A, D, E, so let me do that in blue maybe. There's A, there's D, and E. What plane includes those three points? Well, it's the plane that would include essentially the front of this box, which I'll color in blue, like that. And then the line BC, where's the line BC? BC is back here. Oh, which is not on the front of the box at all. I don't believe that line will ever touch or intersect that plane. So the intersection of these two would have to be the empty set. Let's do one more. We talked, um, or if, if you look in this section of the book, they talk about dihedral angles, dihedral angles. That's going to become an interesting issue with this particular question. So again, we have the same figure, just leave, leave the, uh, the description there. Explain why the planes ADE and FGH are perpendicular. So let me look at those planes and then explain how we would, uh, we would delve into that. ADE, let me color that in blue. So here's ADE. We've seen that before. That's the front of the box, like that. And extending infinitely far in all directions. FGH, let's find FGH. So uh, F is here. Oh, let's change colors. See better. F, G, H. Oh, those are the point. Those are points on the bottom of the box. So we're looking at the front of the box and the bottom of the box. And I think you can agree those would be perpendicular. But what does that exactly mean for planes to be perpendicular? Well, here's what you do. Um, these two planes intersect. Let's look at the line where they intersect. They intersect right here across the front. Now what you do to show that two planes are perpendicular, or, or to discuss the angle between the two planes at all, is you start with that line, and the line of intersection, and you draw a perpendicular line in each of the two planes, and you look at the angle between those. So if you, you can draw the, the perpendicular lines anywhere you like. If you do it judiciously, it'll be easier to see. So first I want to draw a line in the, plane, in the blue plane that is perpendicular to this gold line. This would work. This would be one that would work just fine. I'm going to pick the edge because it happens to be very convenient to see that we're going to have some perpendicular lines. So I look at the line segment DH, and I'm going to ask myself basically, is DH perpendicular to, perpendicular to, that's a U, looks terrible. And now we do the same thing with the other plane. So again, what you do, looking at the red plane now, start with the line of intersection, that gold line where the two planes intersect. Draw a line in the red plane that's perpendicular to that line. And I'm going to choose it judiciously to be an edge. But if you see right there, this purple line is, perp is, is in the, the red plane, but it's perpendicular to that line of intersection. So we're going to look at, is DH perpendicular to, in this case, it would be GH. And if the answer is yes to that question, that those two lines are perpendicular, then the two planes are perpendicular. Now, underneath all of this mess that I have drawn here, and I'm going to erase a little bit of it, make a little clean spot there, notice that I have the little right angle single, sig, symbol indicating that indeed that green line and that purple, purple line are perpendicular to each other. forgot to put that. So because D of A, DH and GH are perpendicular, the answer to that is going to be yes. 
then that indicates that the planes are perpendicular, that uh, the dihedral angle is a right angle. So I hope these few examples have given you sort of a nice view of how you can visualize and answer questions that relate to points, lines, and planes, uh, and that it'll help you with other problems that you're going to see in your homework. Take care.